I'm here at WWDC where Apple just announced the new versions of iOS and iPadOS 18, and I want to cover all the new features in it. This video is sponsored by Sofa. Let's get into it. A big part of this release is home screen customization. App icons can now be placed anywhere. The same goes for widgets on the iPhone as well, which is kind of weird because that was actually already possible on the iPad. In iPadOS 17, you could place widgets wherever you want on the home screen, but now on both the iPhone and the iPad, apps and widgets can be placed anywhere you want but it is still locked to a grid. There is now new theming options, uh, specifically a dark mode theme that you can select and it will shift all of the app icons to be a dark mode version of those apps. It's really interesting, but I'm kind of curious if big companies like Google, Meta, or like really specific utilities actually do this. I, I don't expect they will, but the ones that we have right now are just the Apple first party ones. And some of these like maps and settings and photos in particular, those icons look gorgeous. Another form of customization you could do is you can add a tent to the home screen. So this allows you to tent the widgets and the app icons to say you can be like green or blue or pink or purple, whatever you want. You can tent them and you can also change not just the hue, but you can also change the saturation levels as well. So you can just take all the saturation out of it if you want and do like a black and white theme. There's also a large icon option as well. This will take out the text underneath the app icon. And these app icons get really big. It's gonna take a minute to get used to this. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about them just yet, uh, but it is nice that the text, like the app name that's under an app icon or, or the app name under a widget is gone in this instance. Personally, I would just prefer a setting to let me toggle off the text labels and leave the app icons the same size. Control Center is now completely modular. You can add and remove stuff right from inside Control Center. You no longer have to go into settings to do this. Right now, there are a ton of first party options that you would expect like background sounds, a ton of really great accessibility options, shortcuts, and more. There's also now pages to Control Center. So Control Center, the way these controls work is you can actually resize them on a grid. You can also do this with widgets now too. You can resize them without having to delete them. But in Control Center, when you resize them, if you make them as big as you want, you can create a whole separate page dedicated to just that control. So out of the box, when you install iOS 18, that uh, gives you media playback as a whole separate page and home controls as a whole separate page. But those things can also be added to the main page if you want that as well. Third party developers will be able to add stuff to Control Center now. This is a huge finally. I'm so excited about this. Uh, so they will not only be able to have Control Center top Toggles, but you'll be able to make Control Center pages dedicated to certain apps if you wish. Now on the lock screen, we have had the camera and flashlight icon at the bottom for a while now. And while those are useful utilities, some people might find other utilities to be, well, more useful. You can now actually change those out. You don't get any extra spots, it's still just the two spots, but say you don't want the flashlight, you can remove that and add like a new note option. Or you can take off the camera and add like Shazam or all sorts of different options. There's a ton to pick from. Where I see this could be really interesting is if you really like third-party camera apps, something like Obscura or uh, Kino, the new video uh, capturing app. If you really prefer one of those over Apple's stock app, you could then swap out the Apple camera for one of those. Again, this is something third-party apps will have to update to support. The calculator got a big update. Kind of weird that I'm leading with this, but the calculator is finally on the iPad. So. All those people that have left comments, but it doesn't have a calculator. Well, now it does. The calculator has different modes. There's a basic mode that just, you know, has the traditional numbers, addition, minus, division, multiplication, stuff like that. But there's also a scientific option as well. This will give you a lot more controls and options to do things that honestly, I have no idea what they do. I'm not going to even sit here and pretend like I do. I have no idea. I saw a demo earlier and I had no idea what they were doing with it. But a really killer feature of Calculator is Math Notes. What this is, is it's basically a notes app built into the calculator. So you open up this setting here and you can either just kind of start writing out equations, you can set variables, you can do all sorts of stuff. It's like Solver on the Mac, well, Solver's on the iPhone and iPad now too, but it's kind of like a Solver Lite app. With this, like I said, you can set variables. So if you want to say you have apples equal eight and oranges equal six, you could then do apples plus 
oranges equals, and it'll give you the uh, 14. It'll give you that option. What makes this really interesting is you can use the Apple Pencil with this. So you can write out your equations as complicated as you want. You can even add like add variables and graphs and stuff to this, and it detects all of that. And then as soon as you draw an equal sign next to the problem, it will solve it. Or if it's a graph type math problem, it'll actually display a graph. And then you can go in and either edit numbers that you've already written or edit the graph. You can do all sorts of different things to refine your calculations. Now, all of these features are coming to the iPhone. They're not just specific to the iPad, except for the Apple Pencil support. But Math Notes is on the iPhone. It's just text-based. This video and all of my WWDC coverage is sponsored by Sofa. Sofa is a media tracking app that can help you keep everything you want to watch, read, or play all in one place. This way, nothing falls between the cushions. With Sofa, you can track movies, TV shows, games, books, and more. Sofa is extremely customizable. I set up a queued section for everything I want to watch, read, or play. Then a completed section for everything I have finished. Sofa also has built-in smart lists that take advantage of things like status, ratings, or even tags. I set up one that has all of my all-time favorite media in it. This is basically anything I rank five stars. Then another that is tagged family. This is stuff that I think would be good for me and my girlfriend to watch together. Then there is sections like the pile, logbook, and pinned. I love the idea of the pile. It's a place where if you hear about something, you can quickly add it. Then when you have a minute, you can organize it later. I'm using the pen section for things I'm currently watching, playing, or reading. This way, this stuff doesn't get lost in recommendations. It's incredibly quick to add media into Sofa as well. Sofa is the perfect app for having all of the media you want to consume in one spot. I know for me, if I don't write something down, it's going to get forgotten about. Sofa is extremely flexible, so you can set it up just about any way you want. It has a ton of different themes and app icons. Sofa is completely free to download and try out. You can use the link in the description below to get 40% off an annual membership. My thanks to Sofa for sponsoring this video and all of my WWDC coverage. Notes got a lot of cool features. First, is recording and transcribing audio. I could see this being huge for students that are in lectures or businessy business people, you know, the those people that constantly have meetings. You literally just start hitting record and it will record the audio and transcribe it for you in a note, which means that's searchable then. So that's pretty cool. Notes also got all of the math note stuff from the calculator app. So you actually don't have to go into calculator to use the math notes feature. You can do it right in the notes app, including making graphs and variables and writing out complex equations. This could be especially killer considering Notes' collaboration feature. In Notes, you can collapse sections now. So if you have a bunch of headers, you can go ahead and collapse those. This is really handy. This is something I do a lot in Obsidian right now when I have a very large script or a large document and I finish with a section, I will collapse it. And that's just kind of like the symbol to me that, hey, this part's done, move on. Then they also added the ability to highlight text in notes. So now with tight text, you can add highlighted colors to it. So if you're doing a collaborative document or something like that, and you really want to call something out to a certain person, you could do that. Or if you want to highlight something for yourself so you don't forget, uh, that could be a pretty handy feature. But now on the iPad, there is a feature called Smart Script. This uses machine learning models to recreate your handwriting. So the way this works is it learns the way you're writing. So it checks your handwriting and monitors how you're doing it, how you draw your S's or your D or whatever. It learns from that. And then as you start handwriting uh, in the Notes app, it will then kind of clean up your handwritten text. So if you're a sloppy handwriter like me, this will go in and clean it up, straighten it out, make sure it's all kind of on one line. Like I do this thing where when I'm writing with the Apple Pencil, I start to write like straight for a little bit and then it starts to get a little crooked. So this will keep it all straight. Kind of interesting. But you can also go back and spread text apart here, handwritten text, and add bits in here. So say you're doing a recipe, you're writing a recipe, and you forgot to write a step. You could now pull this apart, write that step, and it kind of comes back together as like perfect deformity. I think this is really interesting. The fact that it learns your handwriting and then goes back and cleans it up for you is really interesting. It's not trying to take over and like, hey, we made this special handwriting font and it's actually really tight text. It's not handwritten text anymore. No, it's still your handwriting. It's just cleaning it up for you now. Mail is getting some killer options I'm really excited for. 
my email inbox is just an absolute disaster. Coming later this year, so it sounds like it'll be after the initial iOS and iPadOS 18 release, there's going to be categories in mail. So as stuff comes in, that's newsletters, or you know maybe this is a priority or something like that, this stuff will then get filtered into different categories in the mail app. It reminds me a lot of SaneBox. Calendars got support to display reminders right inside of it. So the way this works is say I have uh, a task today. My, my demo task is always take out the trash. So say I have take out the trash in reminders for 5 p.m. This will show up in my calendar at 5 p.m. So it shows up in line with my other calendar events, which is great because it's happened to me quite a bit that I'll have a task that I need to do at a certain time, but then I won't look at my task manager and I'll schedule something in my calendar at that same time. So this kind of starts to blend that together. If you have a task that's just scheduled for a specific day, but not a time, it'll show up in the all day section of calendars. So that's kind of nice. But the really nice feature is you can just check off those reminders right in the calendar app. You don't have to jump into reminders to check them off if it's something you've already completed. Safari is getting some really cool features that I'm excited about. First off, the reader mode is being improved. Uh, first off, there is now an automatic table of contents. So if you're reading a really long blog post, it will create a table of contents for you, almost like chapters and YouTube videos. So you can skip right to the part that you want to read. There's also a new summary mode as well. So if it is a really long blog post of something, and you're just like, oh, I don't quite have the time for this, you can read a summary of whatever it's about. And then if you want to decide to, to read more about it a little later on, you can. There's also a new highlights feature in Safari, and I think this is the thing I'm the most excited about. If you've ever gone to like, say a restaurant's webpage or something like that, and you're looking for the phone number to call and make a reservation because they don't do open table or whatever, and you're just like scrolling all around, you can't find it. What this is going to do is it's gonna pull out the, uh, the phone number for you or it'll pull out the address or whatever it is you want. We got a dedicated passwords app. This was my on my wish list. It's the only thing on my wish list we got, but we, we got it. I'm really excited about this. I've been a big iCloud uh, passwords person for a while now. iCloud passwords has been really solid for me in the past, and I'm excited to see a dedicated passwords app. No more having to jump into settings and then go to passwords. There is a whole dedicated passwords app. And of course, it has support for 2FA codes as well. Photos got completely redesigned and is now a single page. I actually really like this. I think this is going to be the most controversial thing in iOS and iPadOS 18 is the photos redesign, but I actually really like it. So if you just scroll up, you have all your photos. If you scroll down when you launch the app, it has all of your albums and memories and all sorts of stuff. And it does a really good job of trying to um, like, hey, when I was in New York, it took all of my New York photos and it put them together. Or when I just went on this trip with my girlfriend, it took all of those photos and put them together. It does a really good job of creating these auto collections. There's also a carousel that you can either uh, use the auto generated content for, like it'll pull out some like what it thinks are key moments and stuff that you might wanna see, but you can also pin certain stuff to it. So what this carousel will do is as you go through it, it will animate these photos, it'll auto play the video and it kind of gives life to these. It's just kind of a nice thing to watch. Messages got a lot of features that people have been asking for, uh, like the ability to add emoji via tap backs. Uh, there is rich text support and animation style specifically for words, not just for like message effects, but you can do stuff specifically to words or sentences. The other really cool feature that's getting that I'm, I'm very excited about is messages via satellite. Uh, so like I'll go hiking up in Yosemite a lot and there is no cell reception up there. But I do get the thing on my iPhone where it shows that I have a satellite connection. And that in the past has just been for like emergency calls. You don't use it for anything else. But with this update, you're going to actually be able to send messages via the satellite with this. It's actually kind of a cool feature because there's been a lot of times where I need to get a hold of somebody because I'm in Yosemite or somebody's tried to get a hold of me and they can't. And yes, I get the whole being in nature thing, but I also have a business to run. So it makes sense. Game mode was introduced on the Mac last year and it's kind of a way to get higher frame rates on games and also a way to get low latency on Bluetooth connected devices like headphones and game controllers. Well, it's now coming to the iPhone and the iPad and I'm really excited to see like what kind of performance gains we will get. Um, there's nothing out right now that supports it. So it's, we have to wait for that. It sounds like the first game that's gonna support it or one of the first games is, is Need for Speed Mobile. So uh, I will download that as soon as I can and, and try it out.
Now, there is a bunch of small stuff I just don't have time to cover, like uh, nodding to deal with Siri when you're wearing AirPods Pro. I actually think this is a really cool feature. So like you can nod to answer a call or nod to decline it. So like if you're in a busy area, you don't want to be looking like that person that's like yelling at their computer phone. Then the home app is getting like changes to where you can in guest mode, you can like share something with certain people. So like if somebody was staying with us for a week, I could give them access to all the lights, but maybe not the door lock or the garage door or something like that or vice versa if you have somebody dropping off something at your house but you're not home you can give them access to the garage door but you don't need to give them access to anything else and robot vacuum cleaner support is coming later in the year to the home app very excited about that super nerdy i know but i'm actually kind of excited about that because you'll be able to start your vacuum right from the home app and then there's topographic and hiking maps right in, well, the Maps app. Uh, that will be really interesting. I'm definitely going to go check those out in Yosemite when I get a chance. But there is a huge elephant in the room. Uh, iPad OS. This is a very, very, very light year for iPad OS. Um, as far as exclusive features to iPad OS go, there's basically two. The first is the new tab bar. Uh, which kind of replaces all the tabs that used to be at the bottom of iPad apps that were like kind of like those iPhone apps that were just blown up to fit the iPad and there was never really any thought put into them. The tab bar is supposed to take care of that now. And it's actually customizable too, which is really nice. So you can move things in and out of the sidebar to the tab bar. Kind of cool. And then, of course, the other exclusive feature is Smart Script um, as just a way to, you know, clean up your handwriting. Already talked about that. But that's it as far as exclusive iPad OS features go. Um, it's very clear to me that Apple had to shift gears away from the platforms and focus on AI. But it would have been nice to get some really a system exclusive features like Mac OS got this really awesome snap feature for multitasking. So it's a lot like Moom or a million other apps like it so that you can drag your window to the left and it takes up to the left half of the screen. If you drag the window to the right, it takes up the right half or to the corner, it'll take up a quarter or something like that. So the Mac's getting that. The iPad, that would have been killer with Stage Manager on the iPad. I'm really bummed the iPad isn't getting that. There are some really cool stuff with the AI features that Apple has made that are coming to the iPad along with the iPhone and Mac. Uh, in particular, uh, I got to see a demo of uh, some text stuff where basically the presenter highlighted some text and it rewrote it for them. Uh, and then there is also an option to just clean up spelling and grammar mistakes, which would be huge for me. I make so many spelling and grammar mistakes. Yeah, and it's kind of embarrassing when you send off a business proposal and uh, yeah, there's spelling errors in that. That's that's not good. So I'm really excited for that. And the Siri stuff. The Siri stuff looks really cool with the Apple intelligence stuff. Uh, what I like about it, that it's doing very different than all the other ones like ChatGPT and Gemini and all that stuff is it's looking at what you're doing in your apps. So there's a really good example of like, hey, your friends are recommending all these TV shows to you, but you didn't write them down. You can just ask Siri to, hey, what were some TV show recommendations by my friends? And it'll pull those up from messages, mail, whatever. I thought that was really cool. Uh, obviously, there's a bunch of other stuff as well. If this AI or Apple intelligence stuff works as advertised, this could be the single most powerful productivity feature Apple has ever added to any of their OSs. Uh, and I'm very excited to dive into it. It's not in the developer beta yet. So if you're one of those people that installs the early betas, if you're gonna do it for this, don't because it's not there. I'm gonna do a dedicated video just to the Apple intelligence, the AI stuff, and talk about how that all works and and you know what you can do with that and what's kind of been shown off so far. Uh, so stay tuned for that. But this is kind of it. This is what's in iOS and iPad OS 18. My thanks to Sofa for sponsoring this video. If you like the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.